<laughs> All right, so let's uh, check in on Tuesday morning. So last night we kind of left off in the middle of doing the the wall modules on the second floor. So right now we have five left and uh, pretty much after those are done we've got actually uh, Evan did the sill plate on the second floor and we're pretty much ready to crank them out and in install them. Yeah, yeah, Evan did the sill plate on the second floor. So we're using the identical system as the first floor, except now it's a little difference is that we're at height. That's the only difference. That means uh, taking the panels up there as opposed to just sitting on the floor. So uh, what was the latest on the way we figured out what we're thinking about the method? Well, the <laughs> Without making it too complicated. Yeah, yeah. In order to uh, minimize complication, we won't be doing anything with a, a pulley system on this build. I think uh, the structure is the right. Yeah, we could do the that. Easiest and uh, easier and faster. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm okay, we can pull that out. That's that's relatively easy. So, uh, the workflow would be probably yeah. I mean, if the tractor is sitting there, we can put it. Two people sitting on a bucket. We just lift them up a bit like halfway up don't even need to go all the way up so that people can comfortably just uh, pull it over the top and we uh, should probably get probably not all of them at the same time just maybe a few so that we're not bottlenecking there's only limited space up there so do like a few right. like four or so and oh, yeah. and with the tractor we can only go from to all the four sides, or is it possible to get the tractor up at all four sides of the house? Or should we have simply one place where you lift up the panels and then install them from that? Yeah, the There's three sides, but I mean, <clears throat> most convenient would be say taking working on a long side from the north, because then you can address the south side walls. You just maybe do those first, so you block off the entire south wall first. We can start with a one. The number one, like we did last time, yeah, yeah, that, do that, that whole workflow, oh. and then if we have that, that's not in a way. That's actually, uh, you know, closing up that one side. Yeah. Put braces on so that the things remain until the top plate and the joists and <laughs> yeah, until the joists connect the two, and they're stabilized by the roof sheeting. That's still flexible. Yeah. So we want to have the braces until uh, the the roof plywood actually goes on. That's what really caps it, makes it pretty solid throughout. But until that point, they're kind of still flexible. So we want to have the braces until that point. So just pieces of two by four, or whatever, that we can screw into the floor uh, and into the panel. We've got access on the panel easily. On the floor itself, uh, try to do it, don't poke like holes everywhere, just po poke the holes at the, at the edges so that we're not poking too many holes into that <coughs> finished plywood, which actually will be the finished ceiling on a, on, a, on a base floor. So when you screw it in, like screw it by the joists or screw it by the edges so that you're not poking in visible holes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like what, what's going to be our last step in this house? Like are we going to do the, like oh, yeah. the rubber or are we going to Last step in the house would be so we've got the roof structure which is the joists and after that there's the uh, the perimeter for the insulation we actually don't have the insulation yes we should put on the EPDM just to get people the idea of what it's like if you want to do it in practice uh, in terms of the weights and and kind of material handling involved I think we should do that uh, so that would be that would be good when, whenever we do the wrap um, are we going to cut it so you can easily take apart your modules and, and re reutilize them? Or are we just going to keep that wrap? Well, nice the wrap is a very long piece, so it can wrap one piece all around. It's 100 feet, the perimeter is 92. So we can just take the whole sheet and wrap it. Now, also, the as far as finishing, carport was in the schedule too for this for this one. So you can see how the carport makes makes it work. Uh, we can install the doors as well on this one, and that's that's pretty much it for this this house. So all the way up to the EPDM and the carport, 
but no finish trim that we can actually do there's plenty of that on the other house and we'll also get a tour of the other the Seagull home one while we're at it this week is yeah. there anything you want us to do with the house wrap and or the rubber to be able to reuse that material since this would be taken out? So, so the only thing on the rubber is that's a sheet that's uh, 50 feet long. How much do we need? We actually need 48 because the, the carport, we have EPDM on top of that too. So it's a fully rainproof structure sloping down just slightly to the side. So we're going to have to cut it at what mark? Th about 33 feet or so. Um, so for the roof you got 32 length. You want to drape it over a little bit. So cut it about 32 and 6 inches and 6 inches on each side. So 33. Uh, we can lay that out on a concrete pad and cut it. Uh, nice straight line so this is actually usable like if we wanted to install it we still have it. We're not putting any holes into it. And uh, yeah. Also the reason to do that it's easy to work on the ground and also uh, it's very heavy. It's, what is it like, I don't know, 300, 400 pounds or so. Two people actually can lift it relatively well, uh, but to get it up, that's it's heavy weight. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we want to do there is probably what we did the last time is before we put on the last piece of plywood on the roof, leave a hole there where we can just uh, push it up and the people on the roof will, will take it up from there so like three and three people something like that but it's heavy like once you cut one third off it it's a little lighter it's you know 300 maybe or so 200 300 a uh, few people can get it not not a big problem um, but yeah it's it's everything here is designed to be a, don't need a crane to do this it's something you can still do with a few people if you have them so uh, yeah, the end point would be, uh, we didn't talk about the exterior skin, which is, which is siding, which is the cement, cement board siding, so we'll put that on. We've got both cement board, which is 4x8 sheets, as well as um, strips of that, which are uh, lap siding, so stuff that overlaps like one over the next, just long strips. So we wanted to experiment with doing both. How does each one work? The advantage of the lap siding is that you can, like minimal waste, because you can always cut it and then use the further piece. If you're cutting out 4 by 8s it's kind of hard to reuse any pieces you cut off. So there's better material efficiency on the lap siding. Now the the 4 by 8s are one, one sheet, so they're probably faster to put on. We'll see how that goes. Uh, now the challenge for the, the sheet siding is cutouts for the windows. So we got to measure that, and they also overlap with a uh, with a joint that's precise. It's got a little lapping joint. So those cuts, yeah, we have to be, I mean, relatively good. We still have trim around the windows, so we trim them up so you can be, you know, a bit off and still be fine. Like up to like a half inch is not a problem. Yeah. Uh, I missed this part. Uh, so when we did the one inch um, on the uh, the front side, we had a lot of room. We on that two inch, is that a direct measurement or does that give us a little bit of room in between there as well from the first floor to the uh, second floor? There's a little space. I think we left like, uh, Katarina, you know, I think we left like a half inch space or something. A bit of space so we have okay. play. Okay, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. Only thing I can actually see thinking about what we've, we've done is we've got reports of 32 feet one inch on the top floor. Yeah. If that is the case, then it looks like there's going to be an issue on the on the bottom two-inch overhang, because then we can't make it overhang that way. Yeah. Right so, now, um, hmm. so we have to shave just down. shave it down a little bit. Uh, yeah. Um, a, you know, a zero to one-inch wedge underneath yeah. the uh, sofa right there. We might go ahead and take a look at that first thing, just so you guys know how the house looking. Yeah, yeah. So the worst case there is, yeah, we just trim a one inch off. We've got if we've got two inch overhang, then the soap plate is one and a half. So we got to just trim a little bit so it actually sits. Because uh, the roof right now, well, this the first floor platform is just a little bit larger. Yeah, and we're trying to keep it to 32 by 16. So then now, as far as the roof goes, then you get a nice even platform there. We're not compounding errors and having to make up 
further up, we're keeping it to 32 by 16. Um, that's pretty much where we're at. I mean, I think I think it's exciting to see the second floor go up. That would be <clears throat> pretty rewarding. What would be the milestone for today? Um, it could be a quite. I mean, <laughs> what we did last time was about an. Say again. Joists. Joists. See, if it goes well like last time, last time we, we took one hour, 15 minutes. That was great. So now we're at height, so it's a little more time. Mm -hmm. But besides getting the panels up there, which is only a few more minutes, still a pretty rapid thing. So definitely we could get to the joists, the top plate, and possibly even the top, top sheeting. Uh, the joists, the joists took us about, what was that, that was about, Oh, I forget what that number was, but it was like around two hours or something. That, that was quick, or one hour to two hours. That was pretty quick too. So, depending on how much people have energy today. But uh, if we spend the second, uh, the second floor, we would need to roof it. Uh, we need to put the the roof uh, the joist. Like joist, it's more like uh, because the rain, right? Well, it's no worse than it is right now. So. It'll, if there's a rain like what you have now versus if you build up the next set of walls it's not different we don't have like insulation and sensitive parts the the, the OSB and the wood can take a few rains so um, we're okay as far as stability that's the bigger question but we'll have the, the braces on the walls when we put them up so they don't fall over and stuff like that they'll be attached to the sill plate and to each other but they can still wobble back and forth so do a triangular brace on the on the on the subfloor so of the second floor. Be five people on the second floor, and um, they are gonna do all the models, or the, how how would you approach it? Uh, division. We can talk about that. As many as fit up there. I don't know. Uh, but is there? Say. Do we have a point to do some division of labor on that, or we kind of been? I mean, I'm sure loose be about on the bottom. it. Yanking them up. Go go, give me on the bottom, man. Yeah, we can do that. We, we should leave, yeah. We should at least, um, I think it's very important that what we noticed last time to like, whenever a, a group is working on one module, that those four or three people kind of see eye to eye and, and, and not trying to correct two things at the same time. So yeah. you don't get any uh, surprises. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so, so if we work the south wall, so people shouldn't be standing at the south side. Um, stay away from that because things can fall over that way. But yeah. not that it's happened yet, but it will sometime. <laughs> and, and, this <laughs> this, yeah, and the supporting braces. You want mm -hmm. supporting bra braces to hold up the wall models. Do you want to fix them to the actual floor of the inside yeah. of the building? Yep. Because that's the only place we have. Yeah. We don't have Should any other. Yeah. Put them at an angle so you can fasten them. Or well, angle like that, like. Yeah, but the board at the end will have a straight edge, right? Just and then yeah, just you can just turn it screw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. They don't. It's okay. They don't have to be exact. You kind of just find it wherever it's working. Yeah. Pop it in and go ahead. Yeah. Or just put a wood block and attach. If you have it this way, With then the put a wood block. Because you can go like this. If you do this, then you can go into it. But then it's kind of hard to attach it on the wall side. Mm -hmm. So you can do this way. It's easy to attach on the studs of the wall side, but not easy on the floor. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so you can put a block there. Well, and we just need a little extra support to, to keep it in there. Cause it, after that it's on, and when we get the next model, we need to screw it off, right? So it's just a temporary hole between getting the new model. Yeah, we'll have a yeah but we still want to keep it on until pretty far into the game, because uh, yeah, the, the, the middle is quite flexible. Yeah. To the point where you have the even with the joists, you can go up there and you can still shake the walls back and forth pretty easily. Yeah. So, but once you put the plywood on that, everything yeah. gets stiff. But then the braces yeah. can be fastened on the inside of, of the module, right? Instead yeah. of being on the connecting, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, yeah. The finished point being the skin house, finished, not necessarily the trim, but the roof and carport, and doors. Mm -hmm. And the windows, good job yesterday. I mean, we just knocked them out, four of them. Uh, they're pretty much, uh, s most of the detail for waterproofing is on it, like the flashing tape and the flashing corners. 
miss some deep like we didn't caulk them because we don't have to right now but yeah went pretty pretty well so hey, yeah uh, I, I have a question can you just hear me yep yep okay um sorry I, I just wanted to go back to the beginning there was something about the the I missed I, I mean I, I heard it but I couldn't understand what people were saying uh, something about the the lip from the always beyond the top floor being two inches but not being able to be two inches can you, can you explain that no I just asked if there was uh, any gapping like we experienced on the first floor to give us a little bit of um, uh, what is it? A mm -hmm. leeway. Right. So, um, yeah. So we did it in a way that the the you know if everything went perfect in the 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 OSP on the second story would be one inch above the OSC on the first story. So we have a one inch buffer there for an error margin of error yeah. cool I think Katarina what you were saying, you know what I'm is saying Katarina our platform ended up being 1632 1632 feet one inch so one okay north side is just a little wider which means we're gonna have to trim the bottom of the plywood on the walls make them fit on a silk plate. So we, well, we, we can't we do that. Over. Right. If we have one inch, we have to go with it. And I'll tell you why. It's because the OSB on the second story needs to be aligned with the OSB on the bottom story. So insetting it does not address anything because we won't be able to get the siding in because now it's one inch in. You know what I'm saying? The, f the, 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 the walls of the building need to all be aligned. Mm. Yeah, I know, but we can't get them, uh, it'll be, you can't put the panel in because you're hitting the floor. You're hitting the subfloor. But, but, but why, why isn't the, the, the soup plate aligned with the subfloor? There, we actually pull that plate out so it's, um, um, Yeah, the I mean, there's two ways to correct it. The plate needs to be on the edge of the floor. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, say that again? There's two ways to correct it. One, we can just simply take the sill plate and move it out an inch. That means yes, that's what we need to do. Right. So then keep that for the top floor. We'll propagate that to the top floor, to the roof. Or yeah, we, can we have to. What's, yes, so, so just for future reference, like hopefully this won't happen the next time because we'll start with, off with the straightest sill plate at the bottom. But once you get this, like you can't correct it that way going forward because then the f your walls will not be let, you know, they won't be flat. Right. So we have to go with it. Whatever is there, we have to go with it. Yeah, we can do that. That would make you it You know what I'm saying? Okay. If we're assuming that we're not finishing off that right wall, then that's fine. But yeah, there will be a an unevenness in the wall if we right. didn't right. do it. And the other disadvantage of this is like we were looking to reuse these modules. So if you shiver for each of them, they'll be incorrect forever, and we have to kind of like throw them out, I guess, or you know, disassemble them or something. Yeah. Okay. So silk plate move over. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Easier, <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. No, that's good. That's good. That that's a solution, and possibly we could even mm -hmm. um, move in the tops just a little bit, so that's not an inch, but maybe a half inch or something, stuff like that. Yeah. Good. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, roll out of pieces. Mm -hmm. So, like there's five modules left. Five so, that's ten people. Mm -hmm. uh, finish that. Uh, that should be done pretty quickly. Those are all corner modules. Yeah. Uh, they're all lined up on the scrum board there. So, pick one and do them. Should be pretty quick. I mean, hour or so. Uh, that's one, basically one, relatively simple module. Not not complicated like, more complicated like the windows. It's plain, but just shorten the yeah, corner modules, which we've done already. So, um, note that some of them are they're on um, both long side and short sides. The, the long sides are all eights, eight foot frames, I believe. On the short side, the frames are either 42.5, which is the 5.5 .5 minus the full, 
equal, and because two of the corners are adjust, you have 42.5 minus that 1.5, so there's two that are 41, two that are 42.5, and then one is the full, um, because there's one missing from the long side. So. Hmm? There's, there's an inch on two of the corners that's in the way? Really? This is short, yeah, one and a half inch, so it's 42.5 minus 1.5, which makes it 41. Oh, wait, okay. Yeah, yeah, 41, a couple of 41s. Can we have a team to start the carport? Um, maybe too much. Not yet, maybe, I mean, there's... What else is there? We can start taking the modules up. I mean, I can get the tractor out if I want to. Mm -hmm. Got to yeah, trim off that. Mm -hmm. We need precisely the south corner. We've got the silk plate to correct. Um, just the silk plate to move over. I think there's plenty. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I'm counting twelve people. So between the modules, there's like ten, and there's one on the sill. I want to get on the tractor to. I have this other implement put on, so I got to take that implement off. Just leave the plain bucket on. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, do you want to do you want to break down into who's doing what, or just go down there and work it? Yeah, we should before we start, but yeah, I think we will have a, our team, right? Like uh, if we go to the shop, we will know with who to work and how to make it. To make this last five models, right? Yeah. yeah, should be pretty, pretty, pretty effective. Pretty quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, as soon as we have them, it's uh, it's only 9:37. We can probably start putting them up before lunch. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's yeah. start just uh, do it. Oh. Park boards, more modules, just more. It's simple. It's actually mostly a, a ledger plate. Yes, there are modules on the other. There's four modules on the other side, and in the middle, it's posts. Okay. So it's it's largely about posts and, and joists okay. and more more plywood. Okay, breaking out to the workshop.